McCarthyism is commonly defined as accusing people of being anti-American nationalists or communists. It was brought about by Senator Joseph McCarthy from Wisconsin, who devoted his life to eliminating communists from the State Department. His accusations would prove to cause much turmoil in the United States. Joseph Raymond McCarthy was born on November 14, 1908, in Grand Chute, Wisconsin, to Bridget and Timothy McCarthy. McCarthy was the fifth of seven children in his family. When he was 14 years old, McCarthy dropped out of middle school to help support his family's farm. He then returned to school when he was 20 and graduated from high school in only one year. After graduating, McCarthy worked his way through Marquette University, where he studied law and engineering and eventually earned his degree in law. He joined the bar in 1935. In 1936, McCarthy ran for district attorney in Shawano, Wisconsin, as a Democrat, but failed to gain the position. Later, in 1939, he ran for the 10th District Circuit Judge and won. McCarthy became a controversial judge, owing to the fact that he was often behind schedule and used only briefs from lawyers from both sides to make his decisions. Because of McCarthy's position as a district judge, he was exempt from the draft during World War II, but decided to enlist in the Marines anyways, because he thought being a Marine veteran would be best for his future political career. Because of his education, McCarthy automatically became an officer whose job was to brief dive bombers before their mis missions. McCarthy often lied about his career in the military, though, and told elaborate war stories. He also claimed to have been in 32 missions and received a distinct, distinguished flying cross and a letter commending his actions from one of his superiors, which was later found to be, have been forged. McCarthy also told varying stories about a war wound he received, often saying it was from plane crashes and anti-aircraft fire. While at war, his political views began to become progressively more conservative, and McCarthy identified himself now as a Republican. In 1944, during his tour of duty, McCar McCarthy tried to run for the Republican Senate nomination, hoping his service as a Marine and his war hero stories would help get him elected, but he lost the nomination to Alexander Wiley. The next year, McCarthy resigned from the Marines and went back to his circuit court position in Wisconsin. After returning to his position as a judge, McCarthy began to campaign for the Republican Senate nomination, again in 1946 against Robert La Follette. McCarthy, during his campaign, basically accused La Follette of being unpatriotic. He tried to distinguish himself from La Follette in a rather classless manner. He charged that La Follette was less patriotic because he had not enlisted into the military during the war and also claimed La Follette had used the war for his own personal financial gains. This helped McCarthy win the primary nomination, and using his experiences in the war to help boost his popularity, McCarthy also won the popular vote. Arnold Beachman, an anti-communist author and scholar, later stated ironically that McCarthy was elected to his first term in the Senate with support from the communist-controlled labor factions. Meanwhile, in America, people were experiencing many developments and much prosperity during the post-war period. Americans saw improvements in transportation, communication, electronics, and medicine. There was also the famous baby boom following the end of the war, when all the soldiers were returning home. This was, without a doubt, a high point for the country. Americans were emerging optimistically from the preceding decades of the Great Depression and World War II. Soon after the war ended, a new fear began to take hold of America. The Cold War began in 1949, and the fear of communism began to escalate. Tensions with the communist nation, the Soviet Union, became a significant factor in increasing American anxiety. Many other international occurrences were causing a sort of red scare to rise in America. Among these were the Soviet Union's rise in power, Mao Zedong's communist army taking control of China, the beginning of the Korean War, and alleged communist activities taking place within America's own government. In 1949, the Soviets tested their first atomic bomb, much earlier than had been expected, 
and it was discovered that a member of the Manhattan Project named Klaus Fuchs admitted to leaking secrets to the Soviet Union. Public agitation had begun to take over America. Many conservatives during this time considered the New Deal policies to be communistic red plots. To some Americans, the New Deal parallels socialism and communism, and many were concerned that it was an effect of communists infiltrating the government. Because of the growing anxiety in America, various anti-communist committees were formed in the federal government to investigate communist activities, including HUAC, the House on Un-American Activities Committee, and SISS, the Senate Internal Security Subcommittee. HUAC notably had no connection with McCarthy, but its goals were, ult were ultimately the same as his. I think we should keep in mind when we refer to Democrats, we refer to the administration, that there are definitely two groups of Democrats as of today. Number one, there are the millions of loyal Americans who have voted the Democrat ticket. Individuals who are just as loyal, who hate communism just as much, and love America just as much as the average Republican. That's one group. On the other hand, there is that small, closely lit group of administration Democrats who are now the complete prisoners and under the complete domination of the bureaucratic, communistic Frankenstein which they themselves have created. Ladies and gentlemen, they shouldn't be called that administration Democrat Party. To call them Democrats is an insult to the millions of loyal American Democrats. They shouldn't be called Democrats. They should be referred to properly as the Commie Crap Party. During McCarthy's time in Congress, he was quite vociferous and was a popular speaker for many different organizations and events. Though he was well known in Congress, he was most certainly not well liked. In fact, he was voted the worst senator currently in office by his peers. In 1950, McCarthy gave the Wheeling Speech to a Republican women's club in West Virginia. This speech was the first example of McCarthy's blatant accusations about communism within the federal government. McCarthy allegedly said in his speech that the State Department is infested with communists. I have here in my hand a list of names that were made known to the Secretary of State as being members of the Communist Party and who nevertheless are still working and shaping policy in the State Department. The press began to cover McCarthy and his accusations extensively, and he garnered much national attention. He wouldn't release the names of the alleged communists in the State Department, but instead referred to them as case numbers. It is generally believed that McCarthy got the list of names from Robert E. Lee, a former FBI agent who worked with the House Appropriations Committee before World War II. This list supposedly included employees of the federal government who are considered to be security risks for varying reasons ranging from supposed communism to reported drunkenness and marital infidelity. A subcommittee on the investigation of loyalty of State Department employees was created later the same month. It was titled the Tidings Committee because it was headed by Democratic Senator Miller Tidings. The committee held trials for the next few months, and during this time, McCarthy expanded his list and made some of the names public. Although McCarthy was a notable, notably persuasive public speaker, he had little factual evidence to support his arguments. Eventually, Tidings admitted that the entire committee had been a fraud and a hoax, and that McCarthy's only goal was to try and confuse and divide the American people to a degree far beyond the hopes of communists themselves. McCarthyism caught on quickly with everyday Americans. There seemed to be a backlash against the modern secular world coming forth in communities. The irrational notion that outsiders threatened the nation from within was causing the general public to speculate the motives of political dissidents, foreigners, and minorities. The 40s saw an informal network of anti-communists being formed among many trusted professionals. A number of these people were influential members of the Catholic Church, which helped spread the anti-communist movement because most, Amer most of America was Catholic during this time. Even a few groups of ex-communists joined the anti-communist cause, 
and their support made the anti-communist argument much more legitimate. Two ex-communists, J.B. Matthews and Benjamin Mandel, were forced out of the Communist Party when Stalin removed their factions from his regime. Mandel then became a congressman and the research director for the Senate Internal Security Subcommittee. Matthews, a leader in the Catholic Church, allowed HUAC to access all of his important documents from the Communist Party and gave the committee a long list of names of people who were involved in the espionage with the Soviets. The rise of McCarthyism was historically significant for the United States. It majorly impacted the conservative American perspective and created a larger, more notable division between the Democrats and Republicans. Regardless of whether or not McCarthy's accusations were veritable, he will be known in history as someone who obsessively targeted communists and persona non gratas for a countless number of internal American problems. Issues of McCarthyism are still controversial today, with instances of racial profiling and suspected terrorism. McCarthy's actions were so widely publicized and have become so synonymous with distrust and false accusations that the term McCarthyism is still used to describe wrongful and unwarranted accusations today.